Good evening to all. We, the co-directors, Deacon Fritz and Mrs. Janet Grant of the National Family Life Ministry of the Church of God of Prophecy in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, welcome you to our third annual Iron Sharpen Iron Conference. A pleasant good evening, my brothers and sisters. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We are so excited to be in Conference 2021, Iron Sharpens Iron. As we continue to build families for the kingdom of God, the Family Life Ministry, our mission is to prepare families for the kingdom of God and to reach out to families to nurture their lives of faith by giving them time together to love and better understand God and each other. Our vision, the Family Life Ministry seeks to strengthen, inspire, and bring healing to homes, families, marriages, and individuals through the love and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight, as you sit in your homes, we want you to relax, enjoy each segment, and be encouraged, be empowered, as we now welcome Minister Samita Ferguson from the Ernest Street Church, who will host this Family Life Let's Talk session. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening in the Lord. talk show. I am Minister Samita Ferguson, your host for this dynamic session, which is coordinated by the National Family Ministries of the Church of God of Prophecy. God knew the important role that families should play in society, hence his reason for making mankind. To love, to have possessions, to fellowship, to connect, and to share. We hear the quote often, family matters. A family that prays together stays together. We've also heard that there is another quote that states, family is the support you will never have to pay for because rain or shine, they will be there to cheer you on and to support your every moves. And we know that there are various types of family dynamics. You have the nuclear family, you have the blended family, you have the single family, you have the adopted family, and you also have the step family. But we can add, despite other components that the world is pushing out there, the family designed by God is what his intentions are. It is an honor for me today again to host this dynamic show. And I am going to call on right now our dynamic family ministries directors in the persons of Deacon Fritz Grant and Minister Janet Grant. Can you come on down? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. My Lord, welcome. you all look so marvelous. How was your day today? Wonderful. We had an awesome day today. Awesome. Yeah. So you, you are about to embark into a dynamic conference. I think this is your third um, annual Iron Sharpens. Absolutely. Iron, Iron Sharpens Iron ah, Conference. Yes. So yes. tell us what's going to transpire during this conference. Well, this conference is going to target the youth, the adults, and the seniors. Uh, it's going to be provocative, it's going to be stimulating, it's going to be informative, it's going to be engaging, and it's going to bring the focus on the entire family. You know, yes. COVID-19 has shifted families, and we are going to let COVID-19 that, uh, yeah, no say on God's family. Amen. And so we are going to this, uh, bring it down. We just gonna let it go. We gonna let's talk. Yes, yes. we're gonna talk. Yes. Real yes. talk. And when yes. we talk, yes. you know, this is where we grow. This is where we yes. get information, 
and this makes us better. Yes. And so this is going to be stimulating, mm, very yes. exciting. I feel yes. already. This yes. uh, we're living in a new climate, and we know that we were operating in a virtual world. So. The, your co-directors from Grand Bahama in the persons of Minister Frank Bo and yes. Sister Sharon Bo yes. was not able to join oh. us, but they are joining us via the internet from all the way from Grand Bahama. Absolutely. I mean, it's yes. so amazing. So you spoke about um, what you expect to transpire during this conference but let's talk and we, we're going to go into the talk show mm -hmm. where we'll host some youths from our church and married couples and also a single individual but let's talk about what else should the public know that's going to transpire in during this conference okay i believe that during this conference they should look forward for a wonderful inspiring empowering session mm -hmm. coming from my young people they're going to be dealing with how to deal with even conflict, mm -hmm. prayer pressure. Mm -hmm. And we, with the senior, they're going to be dealing with how to, to build strong relationships, mm -hmm. yes. how to handle finances in marriage. Yes. All of these things are so important. Mm -hmm. Very important. And also, even with building their spiritual lives, as families, we need to build that strong spiritual relationship yes. in the home. Because the dynamics of the world is just amazing and it's shifting daily. But I saw the flyer and I believe you have a, a dynamic presenter. Can you talk about that? Yes, Mr. Harrison Thompson yeah. is gonna be speaking on families bridging the gap in the 21st century. And that's so important that we are in the world where things are changing. And how do families bridge the gap? How do they navigate through all of this um, changing world? Mm -hmm. And so he's going to be touching out, touching on families bridging the gap in the 21st century. So he has grown up in the church, so he knows the dynamic of the church world. But from his professional perspective, I believe that he is going to empower those who are yes, tuning in. Absolutely. Because so many times we just focus on the spiritual nuggets, but we have diffusing the reality that persons need either therapy and they need counseling to know how to cope and navigate with the times that we are dealing with. Because when you have a Christian that's a counselor or absolutely. therapist, yes. hey, man, yes. you're, you're just yes. fine. So just leave with our audience about three parting words in terms of how you should encourage your family to be dynamic in this season. One, we want them to have good communication. Communication is the key in family relations. And not only communication, but we want them to be fully engaged. We want them to be able to work together as a team. Yes. And most importantly, we want them to seek God first. Mm -hmm. first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. When you put God in the center of family matters, family relationship, you Amen. will be victorious. Yes. We yes. will come out on top. Amen. So, so often, persons try to take the matters on their own hand, families try to go through it with physical strength. So when we look yes. to God, yes. when we look to create our institute marriage, Amen. we will come out on top. We will be victorious. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. so there you have it, folks. Um, our director spoke about communication is key. Most importantly, seeking the face of God because all answers come from above. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm just excited about yes. hearing yes. from our Amen. youths and our single right. um, individual and also our Amen. married couples as we further navigate the conversation on family matters. Deacon Fritz Grant, Minister Janet Grant, thank you so much. Thank you too. And just thank give you. a wave. The young people will say peace out. <laughs> thank you. Now to bring greetings to this third annual Iron Sharpens Iron Conference, which is hosted by the Church of God of Prophecy National Family Ministries Department, is our National Overseer, Bishop Dr. Franklin M. Ferguson. Hello and good evening to all. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of Sister Rowe and our entire family to greet our National Directors of Family Life Ministry, Deacon Fritz Grant and his lovely wife, Minister Janet Grant, along with all of the hardworking local church directors from Grand Bahama, Tinagua. 
Further, I would like to greet all of the families who are tuned in tonight from around the Bahamas and the world by means of the social media. Families are special and ought to be treated as such, and this is why we appoint national and local leaders to engage in workshop sessions, training and counseling sessions, as well as other social engagements on a regular basis in order to preserve the family. Your conference theme, Families Bridging the Gap, is both appropriate and timely as it reminds us of the important roles that is played by families in the affairs of everyday living. Fathers, mothers, sons and daughters must all commit themselves to fulfilling their roles to make the family functional and healthy. Families do not only impact what happens in the household, but also impact their communities and thereby the world. The family is the basic unit of society and therefore must function in love, forgiveness, patience and support for it to grow and flourish. In both the Old and the New Testaments, the Word of God refers to the importance and unity of their family. Its very existence ensures the continuation of life and healthy relationships and it gives us hope for the future. There is a well-known quote attributed to Pope John Paul II which states, as the family goes, so goes the nation and so goes the whole world in which we live. This statement gives us much to consider as well as a stern reminder to keep our families both focused and functioning as God has designed it to be. It was through obedience to God's command that He blessed all the families of the earth and it will require no less for us to be blessed as well. When we obey God and do His will in the earth, there will never be a gap in the flow of His blessings. We will always be blessed. He is a faithful God to every word that He has spoken. He is faithful to a thousand generations. I pray that this conference will cause all of us who are serious about the family and its growth and development to return to obeying God who will enable us to do His will in the earth. I pray that broken hearts and broken relationships will be mended. I pray that the family altar would be rebuilt in every home and that every leader in our homes would be able to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord God Almighty bless all of us and he who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think grant us a transformative and a blessed family life conference 20 Matters Talk Show once again that's hosted by the Church of God of Prophecy National Family Ministries Department. We are going to hear authentic, transparent conversations from our youth. So today joining us in this Family Matters Talk Show which is hosted by the National Family Ministries of the Church of God of Prophecy are some wonderful, beautiful, dynamic, smart, intelligent youths of our church. Namely, Tatiana Fall, just give a wave from the Kamaika Road Church. Caitlin Micklewine from our East Street Church. Javon Johnson from the Kamaika Road Church. And Deja Gray from Soldier Road. And Aisha Lockhart from our Wolf Road Ministries. Are you all, all excited to be here? Yes. No slapping off, right? No slapping off. I think that's what the young people still say, no slapping up. So I am going to ask a, a, just a few questions. And my first question is going to be centered around some of the challenges that the youths are facing today. 
I know I'm in my early 50s and yes, we do have conversations that, oh my God, the young people for up to today are not like how they were when we were growing up. Why do you think it is like that? Do you think it's just that times have changed and maybe your dynamics are different? And I think I am going to ask Caitlin first and then anybody can just jump in. Well, Sister Samita, my family always says this, and my mom um, says the same thing. This generation is wise. And again, a spiritual aspect because a lot of the morals and standards that you upheld in your day, we them completely disregarded. Now everything is what I want as a young person. It's never um, what does what do my parents want? What do um, what does the Bible say? What does God say? I want so. Um, a lot of things are completely eradicated now in terms of the spiritual aspect. Tatiana, what are your views on what Peyton just said and the question? Uh, I agree with that. I feel like now it's so much pressure, like with social media, you see people live in a certain way and you feel like, oh, I need to be like, live up to that you know, I need to get it together. Mm -hmm. So it's so much more pressure and just to to do everything, you know, fit to fit in, yeah. Fit in. And that, that would have been one of the other questions that I would ask. I'm glad you brought that point up in terms of social media presence. It has its positive and also its negative impact. Javon, what are your is your response regarding the social media presence today? Um, I do agree that it has both positive and on the positive side, you have a uh, connection against, I mean, across countries, um, you could communicate with your families overseas, college students, virtual learning, all of its benefits of the internet, social media. However, on the negative side of things, we have um, the pressure, the pressure to fit in and be like what we see others are liking on social media. So sometimes you see celebrities making money quick. Um, they're acting a certain way, going to parties and stuff like that. All of that, all of that pressures us to feel as though we have to do those things to be as successful as they are meant to be. Joan, it's amazing you said that because we are living in a visual world, and I think anything that you see is what um, causes. You are the only young man on this panel. Let's give him a. <laughs> You are representing the youths well. My question to you is normally on a given, it's always let's empower the young women, but uh, because they may feel pr the pressures of the world and they may be easily swayed in a different direction, how is it for a young male, especially growing up in a Pentecostal environment? <laughs> <laughs> for me, um, I grew up on for a short period of time, um, but personally I felt as though it wasn't exactly for me, but it was hard to be different than what other males were doing, because it felt as though something was wrong, even if it wasn't. Um, I do support the empowering women, you know, because we have the empower women, yeah. they have had it harder, so I feel like that's why the focus is directed to helping women um, strive for equality across genders, but men do have it hard as well. Wow. So speaking about um, that in terms of growing up in church and maybe there also have been to be in difficulties, I'm going to turn this, our attention on to a pastor's kid and don't, you can breathe. <laughs> because trust me, I was a pastor's kid, so I know the di PK, so I know the dynamics that comes along with um, just being watched or you might want to, somebody's looking at you through a telescope. So what, how, how do you deal with those dynamics? Are you pressured? And I know that every individual has their own choice. They can decide to be swayed by the environment or the climate that they are in, or they can decide that they want to be disciplined. Then you have some that weigh both. So how do you? as a pastor's kid, approach those dynamics and the challenges that you may face and feel that you cannot voice. Sometimes held to a higher standard than other children, but at the same time, even 
though there may be pressures from others, I remember that God's love covers all. And during my Christian journey, during the journey of salvation, I will make mistakes and that's okay. But the most important thing is to repent and turn because there's nothing like being in the presence of God. So I think that's what really uh, takes the pressure off of me. Like even if people don't understand me, even if people don't want to listen to me, I know that there is a God of all peace who transcends all understanding. Amen. 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 Let's say hallelujah. Amen. And I think that's what cements it all. You know, the Bible speaks about training up a child in the way. Come on, help me Sunday school children. He will, he, will he will not depart from it. So you may stray, like Deja said, but it is, do you stay down in the ashes or do you get up? And you use the key word, and I'm going to turn it to one. I'm sure she's our older uh, besides me, you, <laughs> in the house, because sometimes people feel that in um, a certain environment they are judged. They are judged, and therefore they do not want to confide maybe in an older person, perhaps in the church mm -hmm. environment, because they feel that they would be judged, so they shut up and they confide in their friend, and sometimes it's a friend that may not give godly advice. What would be your response to that scenario? Um, well, I understand that we use younger people to minister or someone, mainly because a lot of times they feel as though what they tell them, they may not stay with that one person. So gossiping can be one of the main issues that you tell, because I feel like if I confide in you, then you shouldn't tell anybody else. But I believe that we as a church would just have to um, be open and honest and I want to say loyal and confident to when young people make a mistake to not just um, push them aside or tell them that, hey, uh, you know, just give off that vibe as if, oh, she isn't the one. But, <laughs> But I believe that if they can just comfort them, mm -hmm. and instead when they make mistakes, say, I'm praying for you, mm -hmm. and it's only a mistake. We're not, we're not perfect at the end of the day. A lot of young people try, to, try so hard to be perfect because um, the church sets such a high standard. So I just want to say that as a young person, it's okay to make a mistake. You don't have to be perfect. And it's okay to get help. <laughs> yes, I am so glad. And oh my gosh, you are, this, you are in my notes because I don't want to turn it. It's a lot of scratching to the camera. <laughs> but one of the key things here is it's okay to get help. Mm -hmm. It is okay to get help. Sometimes in, in growing up, you know, they say, oh, take it to Jesus, leave it there, leave it to the Lord in prayer. Yes, that is imperative, that is vital. But then God has appointed persons in their vocation, like therapists, doctors, who are Christians. Who if you feel that you need to express yourself, reach out, touch the individual, and say, hey, it's okay. It is, it's okay. But do not negate the fact that the Heavenly Father is the one, even as young people, you can go to and say, God, this is my situation, this is my need, I need your help. My last question is, there is a term, and I don't know it's still relevant, you all have to help me young people. It may not be like slap it up or stay woke, right? Is that still in? Stay woke. <laughs> but it, it's, there was a terminology used, yo, YOLO. That's still on the way. You all, what is it? You, you only, only live, live once. once. Do you think that's a negative statement? And the reason why I ask, because when we see some individuals that they're living large, they feel like they want to party, 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 till the day, till the night, because they feel, I'm only living once. It's okay to celebrate this life, but it's how you do it. And to me, I feel, and some persons have said, that, well, if I die, I just go to hell. What, what are your, your thoughts on that? Um, well, in social 
social media, I influence a lot um, young people my age, a little older, a little younger, just in my age range. They joke about going. You, hell is a place of anguish and torture, and I would not want to be there. And it's so sad that we have such a casual, you know, stance or mindset when it comes to being in hell. I, I, it scares me. It does. I agree, I agree. Um, going back to what she said earlier, um, it comes down to this I complex. Everything is about me, yes. my opinion, my desires. And we negate from the fact that it's God. We are God's children. We have to do what God has called us to do. That's right. But now and today, society is telling us that I only live once, so I have to do what makes me happy. When in actuality, we should be living for God. And Sister Selena, um, also I want to say that um, we tend to stray from the advice of our elders just because we don't want to hear it. We, we want to rebel and do what we want. And some most times we know what's wrong, but we just don't want to conform to God's principles. We don't, and it's all the devil. Do you think, yes, it's the devil key, but do you think it's also the pressure from maybe company? Or you just feel, I just want to experience this life and um, the hell or with um, what anybody thinks it's they have a careless attitude about it and we know right from wrong you know we're not stupid especially growing growing up in a Christian home we know right from wrong and when we choose to divert and, and go down those paths we know what we're doing just to um, speak on the YOLO part and to piggyback off of what he said we are here to please God, not ourselves. Mm-hmm. When I think of YOLO, I think of traveling the world or mm-hmm. splurging mm-hmm. on, spending all my money in the car mm-hmm. or a bag or something. Mm-hmm. But if we do that, if we just YOLO and travel the world, we're gonna miss out on our purpose, our true yes. calling. And we are on this earth to please God and to, to walk in this calling and to do what we are called to do. And mm-hmm. if we are YOLOing, yes. we wouldn't be able to do that and that would cause someone else to end up going to hell or I love that. that. Precisely, I love that missing out on your purpose. Because King Solomon spoke about that in the book of Ecclesiastes in terms of life is fleeting. And so many times persons get wrapped up into themselves, the pleasures of this life, and they miss out on their purpose, their reason for why they are existing. You know, y'all always hear y'all are the Joshua generation. Y'all, y'all are Y'all are it. You said you want, you're studying um, media journalism. Trust me, this is your time to shine. I usually you spoke about gifts and talents, you know, gifted dancers we have here, preacher, singer. So that is the key thing that should be present, you know, up there in our lives. Not trying to conform to the environment, but I understand it's difficult because in terms of you know you have this gift and talent, you know you could shine for Jesus, but I, I'm, I don't want to tap into that. I'm not ready yet to use that. I want to conform. Yes. And when I get older, mm-hmm. then I can step up. Well, I think it's because they still have, they, they want to be lukewarm. They still want to enjoy the things of this life and still be for Christ. And it's... God's views are a lot what we look on water, so it it definitely isn't the way to go. And a lot of people, like um, Aisha said, they miss out on their purpose. Mm-hmm. And because they're so focused on the things of life, they they are always in search of what it is. They and it, it'll always be God. You know, everything is rooted in God. And when you move away from that, you try to find other things to compensate for it, like money, drugs, partying, and you will always have this empty feeling, knowing that it can only be fulfilled through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderfully said. Everybody wonderfully said it. So I want y'all to leave some parting words in terms of why family matters, and we're going to start from Tatiana. <laughs> I feel like family is important to guide you through life. Um, your parents would have already experienced some of the stuff, most of the stuff that you will experience in your youth and um, et cetera, like going on through life. So I believe that family is definitely important. Yes. God incorporated the institution of the family for a reason. We have a mother and a father and a sister and a brother because that's how God wanted it. Like Tati said, they're here to tell us the things we need to know. They would have 
probably already experienced it before or don't want us to experience it they may not have but they they care for us they love us and we use that as a foundation to love ourselves and to love others yes because uh, family is indeed a foundation it's the first place where you learn um how to act you learn right from wrong so god is using families to direct you to be who he has called you to be so even growing up in a christian household i we have devotions basically every morning and yeah. i realized that every time we have devotions i wake up with a spirit renewed it's mm -hmm. like i just feel so calm about the day ahead of me mm -hmm. that i don't have to be worried about what might happen um or the stresses of life so That's families right. are indeed important <laughs> The family is important, mainly not just the intermediate family, but the church family is mm -hmm. important because they're there to lift you up when you're down. They're there to pray for you and intercede on your behalf when you can't do it for yourself. So family is just someone there that you can lean on. Yeah. When mm -hmm. when you're just going through so much, they're there and someone you can trust. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe family is important. Mm -hmm. From the beginning of time, God has strategically established things in our lives to lead us to the path of righteousness and to lead us to the path of success. So I would say to use what God has placed in your life for your benefit. It all works together for your good. Uh, family is not only a good thing, but it's a paramount thing because you want to start your life on a firm foundation and good spiritual families can help you to navigate in life correctly and efficiently so that you can one day receive the greatest gift of all, which is salvation and a crown at the end. And the church says, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so there you have it. It is so key that the fabric of our life, of your lives, are woven and cemented in prayer, fellowship, being open, yes. and finding that person in the church environment or a positive mentor where you can offload somebody that will not judge you and when you fall, you know that you can get up, move forward using your gift and talents for the kingdom of God. You guys were awesome. <laughs>
Our youths were on fire as they shared transformative, empowering, and transparent information to our viewers. We are now going to tune into the senior members of our church. We are going to welcome a bishop, pastor, and minister who will also share nuggets that will empower families and also impact our lives. We have all the way from Rivers in the Desert, Minister Diane Williams, Pastor Frank Williams, and also Minister Barbara Moss and Bishop Sterling Moss, all the way from the Meadow Street yeah. Church. <laughs> and we have Latoya, lay minister Latoya Kalma, all the way from Gambia. And also beautiful, beautiful psalmist, and Minister Dion Pertio, all the way from Cambea. Now, it's good to see you all. It's very good to see you all. And we've definitely been discussing family matters and the dynamic of um, just the, how families are dealing during the climate time in you know, which we live in. And um, let's go way, way back because Bishop Moss, I think you're the most senior individual <laughs> in the room today. You and both Minister Barbara came from very, very large families, I guess. Yes. What was the dynamics like for both of you all, understanding the personalities um, that you had to deal with? And I'm sure back in those days, you had to learn contentment um, at an early age. So let's discuss that and then how it's trickled down to how you have molded your children today and teaching them on the matters of contentment. Well, I came from a family of 10, five brothers, five sisters, mm -hmm. and um, you know, my mom and dad, so it was like 12 of us in the family. And um, we grew up learning how to, to play with one another and you know, we didn't have to go outside to look for company, or friends. We had our brothers and sisters as friends, and we learned at an early age how to share, how to um, work together. So that was that was all I knew, and um, yeah. So that that helped me along the way. Even when I went to school, um, most people said, but my teachers always commented that I was more advanced for my age, more mature for my age, because I had older siblings that I could look up to and they carried me along. So I give God thanks for that. And um, it, was, it was wonderful. So in my growing up, it wasn't all <clears throat> beds of roses mm -hmm. because we came from a family that was um, sort of, we say poor, we didn't have everything that the world think that we needed, but we had everything that we needed. Yeah. So I gave God, gave God thanks for that because there was, yes, love. Mm -hmm. And we never went to bed hungry. Um, so we had the things now that, that um, we are looking at now as good things. We had the farm products <laughs> that everybody wants that now. We're to go back yes, to. that we're trying to go back to. <laughs> so that was good. And we thank God for that. So in, in marrying, you know, and having our own children, I was able to um, pass on some of the same values awesome. to them because I found that they love the stories. They love to hear about what we did back then and at one point, you know, sometimes my mom would visit and they always wonder, here, mommy, come tell us some stories. Tell us some stories. You know, they love to hear old stories. And I had no problems. So I only have three, so they were like, Silver spoon. They didn't have the hard time. That I, I guess had. you grew up with the ten. Yes. So well, the nine because you made the ten. Yes. So you said, "I'm not going back there." <laughs> um. Actually, it was not my choice, but oh. that's the way it happened. Okay. And I thank God for it. Okay. <laughs> this was Moss. Um, I came from a blended, a blended family. Big. My mother had seventeen children, oh. and uh, and so. Uh, three different types, of, I mean, three different uh, fathers, no, not fathers, but names. Yeah. And so it was, uh, and all were older than I, I was. And so they, they became, when mom is not there, 
and of course my father wasn't there because he was hired to, to stay on property in the eastern in the eastern district and so my father wasn't there and then my mom to take to take care of the family she had to leave the home at about three o'clock in the morning and come back at about 10 11 and so we never we never saw our mom and so our bigger brothers and sisters grew us up. Of course, Sister May, my mentor, my, my second mom, yeah. she was always there for us. Mm. And she trained us. And so we, we, the last set of children, four of us, we grew up under Brother Maycock. Wow. So <laughs> Brother Maycock's, yeah, wow. Brother Maycock's teaching. And I always tell my wife, I, wow. I, I, I didn't grow up. Wow. Easy. Brother May was a disciplinarian. Mm. And he 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 can he beat you for anything. <laughs> okay? But but we th I thank God for that because what that did was that steered me mm -hmm. in the right direction. And it trained you. And it trained me mm -hmm. and it caused me to even though I used to be in bad company, but I it never did I never did what the company was doing. Mm -hmm drugs, marijuana, but I never did. Because of what I knew, I would meet home if I do, wow. if I did. Wow. The, the, you know, of course, big sister, my mother, uh, me, all of them would beat us. Wow. That's it's, okay. <laughs> man, listen, Bishop, it's amazing that you're sharing the story because as long as I've known you all, I didn't realize that part of your story and so many nuggets that you're just shooting forth um, in terms of what you just said, one of the things that comes out, uh, which you said at the end, was manners make it man. Well, yeah. Back in those days, I, I remember my father always telling a story when he was growing up. He said he would always walk the neighbor's house, past the neighbor's house, and he would say, Good morning, ma'am. Yes. Said the lady said yes. nothing, nothing to him. <laughs> and then the next day, Good morning, ma'am. One day he said he came home, and because he grew up with his grandmother, his grandmother met him at the door with a belt, <laughs> and she whipped him. And he was like, what was that for? She said, because you did not show manners to the neighbor. He said, but I said, good morning. So now today, you what took place with you trained you, and I'm yeah. sure you were able to train yeah. your children, mm -hmm. however, Today's in today's society, there are some parents that negate away from the discipline. Maybe not to the extent of um, um, Brother May, mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of disciplining their children, if somebody says, well, your, ch my, your child did this, they would perhaps want to go fight and cause disruption. What, what do you have to say about that? It's not taking place in the climate, right? You know? Yes. Oh, uh, we were. Back then, we were, you know, like you said, we were very obedient uh, and, and, and we were well trained. Uh, and also, back then, we had a lot of safety nets. You ought to go to the village. Oh, yeah, you know, we, had, we had plenty. The neighbors could have beat you. <laughs> and, you know, and every, any older person in the neighborhood. And so, we had a lot of safety net to prevent us from getting into trouble, okay? Today, uh, so many distractions, mm -hmm. so many social things mm -hmm. that, are, that are out there that, that it really is difficult for you to really, yes, you will train your children in the home and you will teach them uh, and nurture them, but when they go out, like the Bible says, uh, you know, that, that bad, company corrupts good manners uh, and you will do all you can and, and and when your child go out you wouldn't believe that that's the same child that leads your home to go to school my good child my good you know and, and, and so uh, it's it's but we we cannot give up on our children we we still have to go the bible way yes, yes. which is train up a child and read that they should go and then they're old they will not regardless of the technology Yes, we cannot give up on them and we cannot negate away or maneuver away from the biblical prin the principles yes. that's so vital in this time. 
and we, but we have to be realistic also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pastor, <laughs> thank you so much, Bishop. You just shared a, a lot, gave, gave me some knowledge. Pastor Frank, uh, Bishop would have mentioned that his father um, perhaps was not there. How important is it for homes to exist with a father present? And we know some, it's just, you can't, but how important? Well, the reality of, of it is that we know we are in an age now where there are many homes without fathers. But we cannot run from how God's perfect plan was designed. And we know once we go against how something is designed, we will meet hiccups and roadblocks. But the thing is, God is so awesome. He placed people in our lives, individuals. They may not be a biological father. But there, are, there is always somebody who we can look up to, who shares some stuff. We, we learn things from people. Just like how we learn the bad, we also learn the good from people. We have some neighbors growing up who would just simply teach you it. If you didn't have a dad or if you had a dad, they would teach you some stuff with your dad never taught you. Growing up, I learned a lot of things just from my neighbors. And the beauty of it is, if we are smart enough, we can take the good from everybody. I mean, one time ago, we could have used the excuse while well, daddy was in there. But we cannot run from the fact that it is very important to have a father figure in your life. Yeah. There are some things what mommy just can't teach you. True, that's true. You know, there are some things what you just need to hear it from a man. Not speaking in a chauvinistic, a chauvinistic way, but there are some things what men can only teach men. You understand? Right. So what is the role, Pastor Frank, of the church in terms of mentoring? If the church sees, um, and Bishop, you can chime in on this also because you, um, your church is actually in a marginalized area where I'm sure you see many dynamics mm -hmm. that's displayed daily. So when um, Pastor Frank is finished, you can chime in. What, what is the role of the church? You see that individuals may be fatherless, um, should the church embrace these, find mentors like a big brother, um, little brother program? Let's talk about that. Yes. Well, the, the, the job of the church is to be God's voice on the earth, his hand extended on the earth. So wherever there is a lack, it is our job to come in and fill the gap. Uh, we personally um, conduct a prayer group called Fathers of Prayer. You may not... Um, 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 mental or, or sorry biologically have a child but your job is to instant i mean give the instant of 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 what you learn as a father and take on the role like guess what you, you know what i'm going to see this child as my uh uh project if you will the church the church job is to step in and deal with the with the with the human being holistically the full man that's whether you're feeding, whether you're uh, uh, um, um, mentoring them spiritually. But a lot of times we forget and we move from that aspect of it in terms of training children, training families, training young girls. The Bible says that the older should teach the younger. Why? Because the older know the way. But we are in a society now, unfortunately, where it's just us four and no more. Just me, just me. We've moved away mm -hmm. from that, the values. Yes, ma'am. And the importance of creating a village. Yes. Or developing a community. Um, Bishop, just give some words on that. Um, the role of the church in the community, especially the community that, that is, uh, I don't want to use the word uh, ghetto, but marginalized, that are marginalized, marginalized mm -hmm. uh, is to, to, train and to mentor. I, 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 I don't like to be in the church office. I'm a person that is a field person. And so I, I goes out into the community. I sit with them, I talk with them. And I want to hear what they are, what they, how they think. And, and, and so that I can direct them in the right path. And I've been doing that. The dynamics in, 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 in the area that I pastor, uh, I did a survey, mm -hmm. and there's more single families, wow. married families, wow. serious, right? And so, and so I, I, I started to, to, to teach the children, what, and what I'm about to do now is to teach them uh, 
to get their driver's license. Okay. Teach the theory, okay. teach the, the practical, mm -hmm. and, 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 and mentor them. Mentor them. And that gives me the opportunity to impart them to where to go. Your holistically. Your whole, right, I'm them. doing right. Kingdom holistically. building throughout yes. the empowerment. And that's, that's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm, I'm going to do to help them to develop. Because when a, when a, a, a young girl or a young teenager or, or a young teenager, young man, mm -hmm. get a driver's license, you know what that does? That, that, that oh, boosts their the self-esteem <laughs> and, and they can now yes. be independent in their movement Precisely. and eventually get a job. Yes. Get a yes. job. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying. Working strategically. I'm right. yes. and, and they come to home and they can have something to, to awesome. give or to... Come so you're feeding that spiritual soul oh, yeah. and also I'm giving them, and like I used to, I, I'm giving them the natural yes. and also the spiritual. Yes, yes. Like I told them when I used to do the distribution, I said I'm giving you the natural, which is the, the grocery, but I'm, I'm, I'm also going to give you the spiritual. And because of that, two, two beautiful young men join us, got saved. Oh. And join our church. Amen. Amen. Because of Powerful that. report. Yeah, man. And Amen. so and so the church, the role of the church in the community, especially with, among families, is very, very important. You had mentioned about um talking or tapping into a lot of single homes. And we yeah. do have a single um sister in our midst, Minister Dion. <laughs> Dion, of course, um you you would have had a child, um experience what it was like because your child is now deceased um what was it like rearing your child as a, the child as a single mother additionally i'm sure there are a lot of nieces or nephews that you have that you raise as your own speak to the audience on that uh, well let's put it out there first um in my single life i never wanted to be single never wanted to be single and I believe why is this is because I was the last child and my brothers and sisters, they protected me and I was provided for. You could say I was spoiled. So I always wanted a family. And of course I had a son, um, a son before, uh, yeah, before I got saved. And I did as every um, parent would want their child to be imparted with, tell them about God. And, but as our pastor have said, um, there are some things that I could not have imparted unto him because I was not um, a man. But what I knew from the word of God and, and from my parents and so forth were bringing me up, I imparted um, to him. But then, Something happened, mm -hmm. and I think you wanted me to address about um, every morning, he used to go to CC Sweeting. So every morning, I think it was a month before um, what happened, I used to get up and I used to anoint him. I don't know if it was something that, you know, the Lord was just alerting me to, but I used to anoint him and I used to pray um, with him. But um, when he was 20, 21, um, the last day that I, I talked with him, and he was saying that his phone, um, you know, wasn't working. But I got the news that um, he was missing, and I tried to reach out to him, I tried to call him, but there was no answer. Immediately, my whole body began to tremble uncontrollably. And I knew then that, that something was drastically wrong. But to make a short, a long story short, I found out that um, I had to go to the morgue, morgue to view his face. And um, Bishop Moss was there and he was able to, to carry my weight um, because it, it was a terrible blow at that time. But in the midst of that, I heard the voice of God. And he, this question came to me, what would Jesus do? Now, I've just lost a son, and I was depending on God to, to protect my son, to keep my son. I had that trust 
in God. But here it is, I'm looking at my son's face. And he was putting that question, what would Jesus do? And so I listened to that voice and I encourage anybody that as they go through something, God will speak. But we have to listen to that voice and not go into that dark place that the enemy wants to go. But I listened for a moment and he ministered to me, well, they kill his son without a cause. And, but still, you know, he gave his life. He allowed his life to be given, taken so that, you know, we all have a right to the tree of life. And before I left that morgue, of course, as a mother, as a parent, I wanted revenge. And a Christian. Christian or not, I wanted revenge. I want those fellas or that fellow who killed my son, I wanted their life to be taken too. And in that morgue, I was thinking about those things, how am I going to get revenge? But again, God was there speaking, what would Jesus do? And so before I left that mall, I entered that door to that question open. And I was able to break down with the help of our bishop and cry and ask God to forgive me. Why am I asking God to forgive me for someone taking my son? Because I, I had that rage and that anger and that bitterness um, to kill another life. And so I had to repent. And when I repented and asked God to protect and keep those young men that took my son's life, I felt healing came into that room. So I, I would say to anybody that go into it or who experience a dark place as a believer, God is still there. And when he speaks or when he leads that, let's run swiftly through that door so that as we go through that door, he will open up the door to many other avenues, healing and deliverance um, from the situation. So I think you would have just spoken to any family member um, that would have experienced perhaps trauma like yes. you did. I think yes. you would have just spoken life to them in terms of how you handled your grief. And not that grief is something that you probably don't hold on to, but you're knowing how, you know how to navigate based on the healing that came from above. So let us just talk on grief for a moment. Um, my good friend, Minister Diane, you and I are technically in the same boat when it comes to losing a mother of most recently. How, how do you encourage family members, especially during this, this COVID season, that have lost multiple individuals, whether from COVID, whether from cancer, how do you encourage family members um, in terms of handling their loss? One of the things, it's very hard to go through, regardless of the fact that you may be a Christian and you know their hope, and you, you have people talk to you about it, it's a hurt. And when I lost my mom, it was very difficult because my mommy was a strong woman. She would outwalk me. She, you know, I, I couldn't believe it, but it happened. But you know, one of the things I want to encourage people to do is to love on each other every day. Because one of the things that me and my mom did was spend a lot of time together. And that caused even the time that I lost her, I remember all the times that I had her. I know that even in COVID, I didn't want to compromise her house and so I would talk to her from the garage and she would be upstairs. But one day I just felt the urge that I had to hug her. And I told, I said, I, I, I promised God that I wouldn't compromise your position as a 60 year old. I said, however, I need to hug you because we, we used to hugging each other and kissing each other. That's what we do. You know, we feed each other, even as old as, old as I am, my mommy, but if I'm driving and she has food, she would feed me, you know, and I miss her. I really miss her, but I think about all the times that we spend together, so I encourage. And even now, I, I, I'm now taking more time out with my children and my husband. I tell people I will not let my life become so busy that I don't spend time with my family. I will not be sorry in the end to say that I wish that I had. 
and so that is the, the the attitude that i'm taking on i'm i'm so glad that at my mom's funeral um i i didn't feel at the home going i didn't feel um anyway like there was something i should have done because in fact the week before we were talking and i said listen girl if anyone has to was to leave make sure you don't cry and carry on by because you know we only missing each other here and she said well do the same for me you know and and, and pastor i gave me the the right to come up and i always said that it was my mom that gave me away to my husband and i said mom i'm giving you back to god and i was thankful i was just so thankful that pastor die allowed me to do it you know and that was awesome for me and i just i my one encouragement to every family is to love each other don't let anything get in the way of time spent with family because you're going to be sorry it doesn't matter what you have in life the important thing is to love them and i don't care who they are or what they have done love them because love is very important, you know? And so, yes, that's my encouragement, even in COVID. Yes. However you could show your love. Yes. I tell you, I had to go against all of what I believed that day. And I said, Mommy, I need you to come now and say this because I have to hug you. Mm -hmm. I, and, and, and I remember that day so vivid, even now that I can't. Because during COVID, it was a whole time where I wasn't hugging, I wasn't kissing her. Yeah. In fact, I didn't want to compromise at home because we live in two different homes. And I said, no, dear, I have to hug you. And I said to my husband, drive by my mom, because I have to hug her up and I have to kiss her. So imagine you know? if you didn't. And, yeah. and, and that's one of the things that bring out more than anything yes. in my yes. mind, you know? Yes. Yes. But I am, I, I, I'm gonna say it again, I encourage every family yes. member to yes. show love. Yes. If there is a beef between you, fry it up yes. and eat yes. it and love. Deal with it. Deal with that, deal with you it. know? Deal with it, because it's important. Okay, that's amazing oh my goodness and i'm so glad you used the, the point of, in terms of no matter what it is find time to love which brings me to a key point that i typed and i'm laughing because everybody on this panel is a bishop a lay minister or a pastor or a minister so here is it i want everybody to take a couple seconds just a, a 30 seconds per se to answer balancing act is key when it comes to relationship and the church how do we encourage persons that are highly involved to remember that? After all, God created the family and there is an order to how the structure should flow. Come on, church people. <laughs> can't, can't be a Bible study 24-7 and your child out there suffering. Yes, yes, Let's speak yes. to that. Well, balancing, balancing is a very important tool ministers and also the pastors uh, uh, well I always tell my wife we, we, we are we are too too heavily into ministry and we are not zeroing on ourselves and so I, I, I it, it's very important to balance and thank God for this this panel mm -hmm. because it's going to cause us to, to do that we wasn't doing it my my self. We wasn't. It's from the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it, yeah it, and it is hard. And so and so yes, uh, God created the the family first, and so attention should be given to the family. You see, because if one, once we have a strong family, we have a strong church, mm -hmm. and then when we have a strong church, we have a strong community, mm -hmm. and indeed the nation. And so yes, wow. Ministers and pastors, we must strike a balance. Go on honeymoon again, Bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and go out. And so I'm going to let my wife say what. Well, um. <laughs> she, she's the one calling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that the thing about it is um, we, we always took vacation. So family that was, vacation. yeah, family vacation, and we would take all of our children with us. But when I look at it, this COVID has caused um, mm -hmm. a lot of families mm -hmm. to have so Learn much time. Yes. <laughs> we had so much opportunity Please. to just um, get together, to bond as families. And, and I thank God for that. Because during those times, we, we talked, we played games, and we, you know, we always have our family devotion. Mm. But other than that, when my husband get up, He's gone. He's, he has, is so busy, and I am so busy. So I thank God that this COVID 
has given us more time yes. together. Yes. We're able to, even though our kids are out of the home, we had one who was yeah. in the home. So plenty we, things now. That's something. We to be Oh, no. not anymore. <laughs> and I thank God for that because, mm. and with technology, you, it's just like you in another room because you can conversate, talk with your kids, and you know, yes. Yes. it's like nothing. So I thank God for that. That we had um, opportunities. To spend more time together, to play together, um, beat up on one another, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that that costs you know us to bond closer together. Yes, bond. And no, everybody knows my husband is very competitive. Oh, oh so yes. yeah. 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 <laughs> very competitive. So it adds flavor. Yes. You know, excitement. Awesome. And I thank God for that. I so I'm, I'm, I'm going to not let you answer that question, Pastor Frank, so we can, we can move forward. But what encouragement would you give to any young couple out there in terms of igniting the fire and keeping it real? Or maybe a suggestion. Well, um, take vacations. Yes. Always have time for yourself and your husband. Take vacation, take vacation. Don't work, 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 work. That's what we do all the time. Even if we didn't go away there, and, and then have yeah, little date nights. Before. I remember my husband would have a limousine pull up. What? And, and <laughs> so we're going out for the, I thought we would have been driving. But I look, you know, a limousine pull up in the front of our yard. Okay. And that was very, very special. And because the memories you create, it is lasting. And even in the bad times, you're gonna have pull on some of these good memories and costs, you know, that you do to work out yeah. situations. So I thank God, I, I, you know, even in our busy life, we had time, we had a lot of wonderful, 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 wonderful times and memories, and we won't trade that for anything. I'll tell you something. Um, my husband and I. Um, we have a story behind how we came together. Mm. It's actually, it's you know, when we talk story. about <laughs> when, we talk, <laughs> when we talk about how we we um, I was on another island, he, you know, and uh -huh. how we met in one um, BTI, okay. and oh, yes. and having I went home and he's like, okay, the Lord just gave him these things to say. I came to visit the church and the Lord said to him, that's your wife. Wow. Yes, and so, um, he did too. and the Lord gave him whatever to put in the letter. Those days he used to write letters. Yes, I, know about that. <laughs> I know about the letter. Yes. So, <laughs> and, and so when that means that because it was the Lord who brought us together, the enemy doesn't like that. So when we have difficult times, we can pull, go to God and say, God, you are the one who place us together. Yes. So Amen. you know what you need to do for us. Amen. And it seems like everybody is concurring in terms of what you're saying. So Bishop Pastor Frank, I'm <laughs> elevating you. <laughs> 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 um, I, there's something that Minister Moss would have said, and I want to ask you this question in terms of how it to go if there's some difficulty that one may be experiencing in the relationship, remembering, bringing back the memories. But we, we're living in a real world, and not everything is happy or lucky. No. Not every relationship um, is, is cemented under the foundation of, of um, Christ. Um, how do you encourage individuals in terms of if they're going through a rocky situation within their home, what would you say to that individual? And let's speak to the church family, because we know we, we are living in a period of time where church families need healing. It's not one-sided, it's twofold. Well, the first thing is, I would say the first thing you have to do is take off our mask. Yeah. Take off our mask. Um, first of all, uh, uh, the balance in our lives is, I always tell my family, I'm the pastor in church. I'm the pastor when someone needs that spiritual uh, uh, advice or help or something like that. But once you see me leave there, I am daddy, I am husband, I am grandpa. And the thing is, we have to understand that when people going through, 
the last thing somebody wants to hear you do is bring a scripture. I don't care how saved they are. They want you to bring the realness of it. And the realness of it is teeth and tongue will meet. And when they meet, it's not the fact that, oh, we had a row. But it is the coming back together. Understanding that the greatest ministry we have is the ministry of reconciliation. And we must not negate the fact that we were two different individuals what God has brought together. So if you have a problem with your son, your daughter, the first thing you have to do is listen. Yes. Problem with your wife, you have to listen. Our problem is we speak twice as much as we listen. But God gave us two ears and one mouth. That means we must listen twice as much as we speak. And when we hear the individual talk, then it brings us to a place where we can bring the healing process. Most of the time when trauma takes place, people just want to Thanks. express and vent. They want to get out what is really bothering them. But we don't allow it because we spend too much time talking. Yeah. One of Stephen Covey's highly effective leadership tools is seek to understand, then to be understood. So it's important to listen, hear. When you listen, you can hear exactly what is taking place. So you could know how to maneuver to seek that spiritual and professional help. But of course, cementing on the word of yes. God. We cannot move away from that. No. So Minister Latoya, you, we, we, I, I just mentioned that it's not a one side, it's a twofold thing. And we evidently, we are not living in a bubble. And I think once the church world realizes that we can be a greater impact um, on our society. Um, as a mother, just speak to the importance of understanding your child or children and uh, um, additionally, um, they may make their own choices, but how do you still encourage, still love, and still empower them and leave everything up to God? Well, first of all, I think, um, like Pastor Frank would have said, it's important for us to listen to our children. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, we as parents, we want to be the ones in charge. We want to be the ones lording over I'm the mother, I'm the father, I, I know what is best, you know, but it's important to listen to them because sometimes they're not always coming from where we think they're coming from. They may be coming from a different angle. So when you're listening, you're able to address better the situation. Um, in terms of, of um, them making their choices, we know now that there's so many distractions, I think I've heard it before, so many distractions for our, our children, so many different pulls on the outside for our children. So even though we're teaching them one thing in the home, we're giving them what we, what, what we think God has given us to give to them. Mm -hmm. But outside, when they go to school, when they go to work, or even on the park, different places, um, they, are, they, they gather these different influences. You know, they have these different influences coming at them left, right, and center. And, and, and they are at the point where you know, they don't know, what do I do? And some of them do decide to go that way, sure. as opposed to what it is that mommy and daddy's giving them or what the church is giving them. And I think the best thing to do in that situation is pray. And that may sound cliche, you know? And love. Prayer and love, Def definitely love. We have to love our children, and, and sister, um, Minister Diane said it, it don't matter what they've done. It don't matter what they look like because it's cool yes. that they need to come yes. to. They, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to come back. They're gonna come back to to whom? May not be physically, but in their mind, they're gonna come back to whom? What what mommy did? What daddy did? How how I was? How they they handled me in this situation? And I think the way we, we that love it then um, causes them to be. Right then and then, it might be they might might not be in that position where they can um, 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 make those decisions that you want them to make. But I think when they would have gotten to that place, they remember that love. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. They remember that love, and then too, as parents, you won't have the regrets mm -hmm. that I didn't get the opportunity 
you know, uh, Minister Dion said she lost her son. And so you're thinking something happens to my child and I didn't get the opportunity to share that love with them. I didn't get the opportunity to, you know, and I, and I mean, the prayer comes in for both sides because it's there to help the parent as well because sometimes the parent is struggling, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where they get their help from um, and go into God for solace and then also to cover them, my child. Mm -hmm. God, cover my child, keep my child. You know, save my son, save my daughter, right. you know, and then you still display that love. Yes. And then so even the choices that they make, they may buck up, yeah. but again, they have you're still there to. like the yes. chronicle yes. father yes. was, was arms there to open. embrace yes. and arms yes. open yes. wide. As they said, I'm yes. coming, I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, Lord, this is hot. Yes. There's so much more we can ask, but the <laughs> time is winding and I think we may need to do a part two to this later on. We'll talk to the directors on that. <laughs> but um, I want everybody just to say, I'm gonna talk, on finance, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna, and I just want you to say yes or no, okay? In terms of from a financial perspective, do you think it's important? I should really focus on the couples for this, eh? Do you think it's important to um, to have one bank account, one bank account, and why? Well, I'll say this: it doesn't matter how many bank accounts you have, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. the point is. Everything we do, we do together. Yeah. And so every account that I have, and I, I would hope that he has because we do share everything, um, my name is, his name is on my account. Yes. All right? And so everything me and my husband do, finance is never a problem. We do it together. I, I don't tell, if I am sowing a seed somewhere, he knows about it. If I am giving somebody something, he knows. In fact, I want him to be the one to... Um, come into agreement with me and pray because whatever I get he has and whatever he gets I have and that's how we see it so it's never my thing your thing from we got married and probably because we started out with nothing so everything that we have we have together we don't say my things your things it don't go like that it's so our you things know, you don't go sneak and buy a shoe and then keep it in the closet for a week and, and, and he go with me to buy the shoe oh. <laughs> Yeah, you there you go. Okay, uh, when it comes to the finance and as we all aware, I know that traditionally one bank account was in existence. Uh, a joint account, we call it that. A joint account. Uh, but that tends to, I, that's what I wanted. But my wife said, well, she want an independent account. And you keep and you keep yours. I said okay, but we we go, we both would be able to that sign sense. on each yes. account without well I won't say without any approval from each other, but through discussion, yeah. mm -hmm. through discussion, honey, I'm going to take off two thousand dollars. From the account, fine, and 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 don't you don't have to think what you can do with it because I know you're going to spend it on yourself or you're going to spend it on your home. Yes. And so what happens yes. with with two separate account is that trust. trust. Yes, yeah, number one. Trust is number yeah. one. Mm -hmm. so if if that person or that spouse is splurge, uh, they splurge, they have a, a hat a bad habit, then. And you gotta, and, you gotta pull, when, you gotta pull that slack. And when that you moment. have children, you have to train them, yeah. especially this time. Mm -hmm. You know, so they don't have an empty pocket or what mm -hmm. they used to say, holy pocket. Mm -hmm. yeah. Water keeps, uh, you know, seeping through. So it's yeah. important but to train them. I'm a saver. So I'm a saver. I'm a saver. Yeah. Awesome. And I train my children yes. likewise. I have my eldest daughter. She would save a nickel, nickel or a nickel. Okay. What about you? And then she on. Well, I'm gonna speak personally for myself. Um, at this, <laughs> at this time, I am not, um, say, employed. So it's just my husband. Um, I work along with him as co-owner of his is our business. That's our our business. <laughs> and so, um, but I, I agree with with Minister with Minister um, Diane. You know, whatever we do, we do it together. So there's no yours and mine's. Um, but now at this time, we have one income. You know, so it's basically 
one bank account. And so, um, but whatever is there, I know. You know, there's no um, hidden anything. Even with the savings account, I have access to them. Whatever, whatever finances there is, I have access to it. Whether it's gonna be a separate bank account or this individual bank account, there's always been an a, a understanding that this is here for us, Amen. you know, so. Amen. Amen. So Dion, you're single, so I would not ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you should have a well flowing oh, over. Yes. So when, oh, yeah. when your Boaz comes, yes. when we're speaking it, yes. Yes. yes, because Dion, a couple seconds, just 30 seconds, I want you to say, end my um, statement. I am single, I am a minister, and sometimes it is hard. But going back to um, <laughs> your question that you asked about the balance, me as a single um, person in my home, um, I mostly carry the burden emotionally, uh, spiritually, and sometimes even financially. And sometimes it gets overwhelming. Because like I said, I'm the, I'm the only safe person in my house. And, uh, it got discouraging at times because you, you want your family to know the Lord. That's why you, you tell them and you try to live that life in front of them. So it gets heavy at times. But at those times, you need to step away because doing all those stuff, you have to still depend on God to, to do the things that you're asking Him to do. So it gets overwhelming at times. And these are the times you need to step aside take a break and at one point i meet just me me and jesus used to go and i used to sit out on the beach take some food and me and him just love upon one another make a date with jesus because you needed that um to fill you up that time to fill yourself up so that when you go back into the home you're able to carry something back and continue to do the work of an evangelist to keep ministering them, to keep loving them. And I want to say this before I, I, you know, it got to a point that because my family was not producing some of the things that I thought they would by now, they should know. Because we come from a spiritual background, my Heritage. grandparents and my mm -hmm. mother, oh my God. So I like, surely by now somebody should come. And I got discouraged and I stepped away in my heart grew hard and so I'm at the point now I'm at that point now that I'm asking God God give me compassion again to, to love and to to continue to tell them um, you know the love of you so that and I think I made it about me more than um, about God and so I had to step back and allow God to refresh me revive me and so that when I went back into my home I'm able to love and, and do the things that I need to do to continue to Amen. minister so, to them. And that is what we're hearing again as we wrap up. Love, love covers. covers. Love covers when our children mm -hmm. go left or right. Love covers. Yes. Love covers when you have to go back and remember the things that brought you together. Mm -hmm. Love covers. Love covers when you're like, God, I'm crying and I'm single and I need my bonus, but the love of God yes. surpasses yes. yes. and it will cover yes. until yes. that such time. So we've talked about communication. We've talked about maintaining the values and most importantly, ensuring that families are cemented with Christ. With Christ. One word, family is important because, one word. Because we need each other for support. Need love. <laughs> we need each other to survive. Mm -hmm. We need each other to survive. Amen. God yes. bless you all. I think y'all did a wonderful job. You can read. So we have, we have spoken about love, we've spoken about communication, we've spoken about the importance of having family values and not judging our children or anybody that comes in our pathway, but just again expressing our love. But one thing that we cannot leave out, the word of God and prayer. 
Bishop Moss, I would like you just to close this session out of prayer. We pray for the nation, pray for our families. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your darling Son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks and praise for our family life ministry and the inspiration that you have given our co-directors. God, to have such a panel discussion on family matters. God, we just thank you for families. Yes. We thank you, God, for the institution of marriage. Even though, God, on a daily basis, it is under attack by the enemy. But God, we thank you because you are there in families and in marriages. God, to see them be successful. And so, God, we pray that you will help couples, help marriages, especially those with children. God, that we will know how to and give us the know-how. God, to communicate with our children. We don't want to turn them away. We don't want them, we don't want to abuse them. But God, we want to love them. And so God help us under all circumstances. God to love them. Because your word tells us that love covers a multitude of sin. And so God, we pray for marriages, the Heavenly Father, that is under the attack of the enemy in our churches and also in our nation. Oh God, we pray for strong marriages. We pray for strong families, God. And whatever families are going through with, God, that they will better it. Because the, the, the same goal that the family that prays together, God will stay together. And so bless God. Bless families. And cause families, God, to stay together, to pray together, and to worship you together, and to love, love one another, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, bless our families. Yes, our marriages. Yes, some are going to stormy, stormy seas. Some are heading for the divorce call. But God will heal out of our hunger. God will have the power to turn every situation for your good. Yes. Oh, I turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. There is a quote that states, no family is perfect. We argue, we fight, we even stop talking to each other. At the end, family is family. The love will always be there at the end of the day. People will come and people will go, but family will always be there. You cannot choose them, so it is best to love them and love them unconditionally. You have heard the voices of our teens, young adults, single and couples, and their views on family matters. Yes, we do not live in a perfect world, but we serve a perfect God who is able to mend broken hearts and comfort the comfortless. One thing we encourage is families cannot seem to get it right. Due to many variables, we encourage you to get professional and spiritual counseling. Burst the bubble and bring healing to that situation. At the end of the day, families should declare, like Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I am Samita Ferguson, and I've enjoyed taking you on this journey of Family Matters a talk show hosted by the National Family Ministries Department of the Church of God of Prophecy under the leadership of Deacon Fritz Grant and Minister Janet Grant. Additionally, co-directors from Grand Bahama, Ministers Franklin and Sharon Booth Grant. Hey, be real, be transparent, and authentically share your story. It can bring healing to someone today.